Hi, everybody. Welcome to Conduct Vision Talks. How has business education changed in 2020? Can we predict how it will transform in 2021? Looking for answers, I reached out to Dr. Ajit Patil in Mumbai. Ajit is a management consultant and visiting professor at leading business schools in India and abroad. Reading his articles on LinkedIn, I found his ideas on education, the importance of meditation and understanding of history inspiring and may guide us to a better future. Ajit, what makes a good teacher? Uh, I'm sure you know that elephant story. Huh? Elephant was judged by a few blind men. And everybody touched one part of element, uh, elephant mm -hmm. and thought, thought that was the elephant. So a good teacher is like elephant. So different people have, they, different people pursue them, dif pursue elephant differently. So let me share a few perspectives of good teacher because only one or two things uh, don't make a good teacher. The first important thing, as you know, like uh, any caricature of teacher, you would always see blackboard, somebody writing on blackboard. So one says teacher. So teachers write on blackboard, but good teachers, they write on the minds of their students. So that is the ability of the good teacher. So good teachers will write on the minds of students. They carve dreams rather than handing over notes or dictating notes. So good teachers write on mind and they carve dreams for their students. So these good student, uh, good teachers will open up students' mind. They will inspire. They will inspire to do them something. And might be every student is given with a different mission based on what he is good at and what he enjoys because God has given different things to different people and teacher knows that well, teacher can feel that well and then accordingly teacher gives mission to his students, different missions to different students and inspires and not only inspires but good teacher also shows the way. That is very important. So good teacher will show the way. <clears throat> Good teacher himself is a good student. That is very important. Because unless you are a good student, you cannot be a good teacher. And being good student is being inquisitive and being research oriented. That is very important. So a good teacher is research oriented and then he gathers a lot of knowledge and puts that knowledge in perspective, prepares a beautiful bouquet and presents that book in the class to its students. So that is the ability of the good student, uh, good teacher, I would say. <clears throat> then good teacher is like a butterfly. Yes. And he will, he will fly from flower to flower. And his flowers are books. His flowers are uh, learned people. His flowers are his other colleagues, co-faculty, his flowers are researchers, his flower is also there on internet. Internet is garden for good teacher. So this good teacher will move from flower to flower and collect honey and then feed that honey to his students. So that is the ability of good student. Next important thing is good teacher always wants to share. He's desperate to share whatever he has. And he's, he never holds everything to his chest. No, that is bad teacher. So good teacher is very transparent, very open. He wants to, or she wants to share. I'm saying he or she, like, uh, so let's not say that he, sometimes I'll say he or she. So she is uh, like, loves sharing it with, his, uh, with her students. And most important thing is a uh, good teacher strives, thrives, grows 
or rather lives in classroom for good teacher classroom is her church classroom is her temple classroom is her mosque and so it's like fish cannot stay without water a good teacher cannot stay outside the class so the moment a good teacher enters the class she is very very comfortable and you take her out of the class and put it in some administrative role that is the last thing good teacher will enjoy good teacher would for a good teacher getting into administrative role like becoming supervisor or principal is not the career and you i'm sure you have also seen in your childhood good teachers would always remain teachers and they would never they would never graduate to principals or supervisors so that is the ability of i would say uh, good teachers most important thing is good teachers are emotionally hooked to their students that is very so intellectually yes there is a intellectual bond there is academic bond yes but uh, teachers normally are the normal teachers will have formal relationships with students but good teacher is emotionally hooked and he has emotional stakes with his students like uh, student fails in doing something so teacher is nervous see unhappy or student is attempting something bigger better which is very critical to student in his in her career that teacher is nervous sometimes more nervous than the student herself that is important because this is a strong emotional bond that teacher shares with student that is that is why this uh, kind of uh, uh, attachment you can see so i would say that these are some of the qualities as i said uh, these are the some of the body parts of this elephant that i could catch in last 23 years of my teaching mba students in india and overseas uh that's wonderfully said uh i want to ask you now uh, in 2020 how has teaching changed in your opinion not only from physical school to online but also content wise uh see like this pandemic 2020 like everybody is hit pa by a pandemic everybody is fearing uh, like i have also hardly gone out of my home for the last almost 7 months now in mumbai so we had a bad time really bad time bad bad time uh, but i would say that this pandemic is also a blazing in disguise particularly for education because many things which were overdue which which had inertia they will happen now that is what uh i am feeling like for example the real growth of germany took place when the german wall came down and the real education will start when the walls of classroom will collapse i am not saying that class will vanish classroom will never vanish i am only saying that the walls will be broken and the classroom will become a global classroom the dimensions will change like today it is restricted only to a few student and i am teaching only that limited student but tomorrow's classroom could be different like in my class some of the rural indian students will be sitting some rural chinese students will be sitting or somebody from prague will be in my class classroom when i am teaching so in a way what will happen is what i can see is this walls of classroom will uh, break they will come down and uh, another important thing is now knowledge is available on internet if it is just teaching from the book students don't need teachers frankly speaking students don't need teacher so students will look for insights internet may not give you insights internet internet may not give you the application how to apply a particular thing in a particular special situation so students will be looking for insights application and they will also be looking for the wisdom from from the teacher 
one important uh, radical transformation is going to happen or paradigm shift we say the paradigm shift so paradigm shift will happen due to uh, like a post covid that i can clearly see today the ownership of knowledge transfer is with teacher like i am responsible to complete the course syllabus and i am responsible uh, acad academically for the performance of my student but i clearly see that post pandemic the situation would change and the focus will shift from teaching to learning because the moment we say that change of focus change of paradigm the moment we say learning will become dominant it means the ownership will go to students and teachers will be facilitators they will be providers and protectors that will be the role so i see that clear transformation of the role of teacher post 2020 that is what i am looking at it that is a very interesting perspective and are there topics now that you push more than others uh yes certain topics uh, i am pushing more like for example uh, as i told you uh, uh, already that uh, i am focusing more on uh, like i have seen in corporate sector also we have seen people from very really good b schools but uh, get into unethical practices and then people are not bothered for environmental cause so uh, that is something which uh, so we uh, i am focusing not just to transfer knowledge but educate students in true sense that is my major focus and when i am talking about educating my students then i am considering more that uh, how do i create that awareness for ecology and how do i uh, inculcate that ethical behavior and ethical thought in uh, students and that happens in schooling so what happens in school school it should happen in b schools that is my uh, concern so so that is something which i am pushing and then what i am pushing is transformation of student like student coming to mba class and student going from mba class there must be transformation so i am focusing on that like there there are some students in every class there are some students who are c category so in tech c category when they are going they should be b if somebody in tech is b category he should be a and if somebody is a category then he should be a plus category so there should be transformation and the way student thinks the way uh, student talks the way student works must change after going through because as i told you this is very uh, uh, mba education is very costly education and students are spending two uh, important valuable years lot of money so we must ensure that they get transformed and this transformation and what happens is like i have seen some b schools uh, the first thing and the only thing they talk about is placements okay. placements so my point is uh i in my classroom what i push is i push making my students become placeable that is very important so once they are placeable placement should be by, by default and they should not be really worried for placement so these are few things like which i am focusing in my classroom and how does the classroom actually now work with the focus on online teaching what is your experience um now with with online uh see my experience to be very honest with you like i am compared to learn now because traditionally i am offline teacher uh but however due to pandemic uh, it became mandatory for me to teach online because government is not allowing conducting offline classes so i was compelled frankly speaking to do that but uh i am really enjoying it and i am learning it that is very important what i have realized is uh, like offline online teaching is drastically different than offline teaching 
but at the same time it is strikingly similar also so there are few like for example unless you are good teacher offline you cannot be good teacher online okay so in order to be good teacher uh, uh, online you have to be good teacher offline but that is not enough that is not enough being a good teacher offline is not enough there are other things like you have to adopt and adapt that is very important so you have to adopt and adapt to this new reality and uh, be part of the change and those who will not be part of change will be changed so rather than getting changed be a part of change so that is what i am looking at uh, this thing but the early like this semester i have started teaching online and complete uh, courses i am teaching online so the early feedback from my students is really encouraging and uh, they are telling me that yes i am learning this but it took almost uh, like when i started teaching might be initial one or two semesters i i was not really happy students were happy but i was not really happy with myself and i really observed that it took almost 3 years for me to be okay teacher and it almost took me 5 to 7 years to be a good offline teacher so if i have taken 7 years to be a good teacher offline i am i am going to certainly take few more years to be a good teacher online i'm sure it will be faster <laughs> yeah, thank you <laughs> thank you you know i enjoy your um articles uh very much on linkedin and actually i found a quote i really liked and that is uh meditation is a process of getting introduced to yourself um so can you tell us a bit more about that uh getting introduced to yourself that is meditation i have written that yes see sometimes very honestly i am telling you when i write i don't write Mm -hmm. uh like when a good article comes then uh, so after i finish that article i realize that oh my god i have not written it so uh it is the gabriel who speaks in my ear and gives me god's message and i write so sometimes like i write and uh, uh, subconsciously and then i realize the power of what i have written but also realize that it doesn't belong to me it belongs to almighty so this is one such thing that the sentence that statement that you have said that uh, uh, intro getting introduced to yourself now let me explain you this see uh, god has given us two minds uh, before that see human is very talkative we always talk we always talk and uh, when we can't talk to others we talk to ourselves and that is because god has given us two minds so when we are not talking to others our two minds talk to each other so we are talking to ourselves and another interesting thing that i have seen is our two minds are exactly opposite they are like husband and wife diagonally opposite <laughs> so they never think alike they are diagonally opposite and that is why they keep debating and their debate when we talk to ourselves generate lot of confusion in our mind and then we lose our peace of mind so that is the root cause of not having peace of mind and so what happens is if we really want to achieve meditation see the uh, in hindu uh, this thing culture there is one word sanskrit word the word, meaning of the, the word is sthita pragna so sthita sthita pragna means uh, that condition of medis meditation so you become like a tree let me explain you become like a tree like tree is stationary tree doesn't think tree doesn't uh, uh, speak but it gives flowers it gives fragrance it gives fragrance it gives fruits and it also gives shadow to people so even if it is sthita pragna it helps and it leaves for others and that situation is meditation 
and that comes only when you are introduced to yourself when you know who you are that is very important knowing that who you are god has given different things to different people so understanding what is that god has given me rather than cursing god what he has not given me like you are very fair and i am very dark so rather than cursing god oh how come her she has golden hair and i have black hair right rather than cursing god why not understand what is that god has given me exclusively differently and that is introducing into getting introduced to ourselves and that comes when our two minds will think alike we settle the confusion and we understand what we can do what we cannot do what is beyond our reach and most importantly what is purpose of our life and understanding yourself is understanding the purpose of your life what see like ambitious people i have seen ambitious people want to do something but some students ask me sir what is that we should do i said see you want to do is one thing but what is more important is what people want you to do like if people want i want to do business on money and roam around in bmw that is what i want to do and i am planning my career like that but people want me to do research study teach write and do consultancy so when we understand what people want us to do when we understand what god wants us to do and what he has empowered us to do that is very important and that is what i mean by understanding yourself thank you well, this is very insightful inspiring um further in your articles you often use historical metaphors i found this very interesting i'm a great lover of uh history and uh, how powerful is this metaphor and why do you use it uh see this is very tried and tested method and might be because i am professor of management i tend to write in that way uh in management we transfer knowledge one of the methods is case study so these case studies are nothing it is nothing but a storytelling method because people enjoy stories if you just uh, start uh, uh, doing knowledge transfer in difficult uh, complex words and jargons they may not enjoy it. but the best way to do is through storytelling so that generates interest in their mind and uh, and most important thing is like people develop faith in the concept that you are sharing when they get to know that great leaders succeeded using these same concepts in history great people say like i am teaching strategy and when i am giving example of napoleon bonaparte or let's say alexander the great that is the time they realize that they use this strategy and they made it a great success out of it so that is why uh, so it is a storytelling method it generates interest uh, it uh, enhances belief of people people enjoy it it doesn't become bore kind of thing the readability of the article goes up and uh, most important thing is uh, uh, i would say that history repeats so so we can't forget uh, particularly the lessons that we learn from history but you can't share only moral of the story unless you tell them story <laughs> right so <laughs> history is, yeah so that is the reason i refer to mistakes uh now coming to the conclusion of our talk um how do you see business education moving forward in 2021 Uh, see i am very unhappy let me tell uh, tell you uh, our own this thing like uh, my daughter uh, supriya she uh, scored uh, first rank in entire mumbai university in her undergraduate course very brilliant girl and now works for uh, india's best uh, business firm that is tatas 
so she also scored very good marks in gmat so she can she is competent of getting into harvards and waltons and these good b schools in america and i also have half my family stays in america we also have house in america but the mba education in america is real real costly it has gone not only america for that matter it is globally i'm sure in europe also that situation is there it has gone beyond the reach of even higher middle class parents so parents cannot uh, pay for higher education of uh, their kids that is the reality long back in america in europe and now it is also coming true uh, becoming true in countries developing countries like india mm. so like uh, if you see the date student date student date in america on other day i was looking on internet is 1.5 billion dollars student date that the money that they are paying to universities and the interesting perspective is there are only 14 14 14 countries in the world who have income gdp more than 1.5 trillion so you can imagine the kind of debt students are carrying on their head and it takes at least 5 to 7 sometimes 10 years for them to get rid of that education debt so i i feel that this cannot sustain in long term and there will be disruption happening in particularly in management education see because education is also industry now right and it happened like banking industry was disrupted by certain developments like plastic money internet banking uh, atms and you said that uh, it had changed these things have changed the way people did banking today banking is done differently than it was done in the last decade so this lot of disruption has happened uh, if you are going to bank offline bank the branch and opting for service then you are charged service charges so it has gone to that level same disruption happen in retailing industry also like offline retail and people say online retail is not going to survive and you you see that uh, people like jack ma uh, and jeb bezos came out with interesting concept called new retail uh, and uh, they came out with omni channel retail and today what we see is lot of disruption happening so it is no longer online versus offline it is combine it is hybrid combination same retailer is offline leading like walmart is also leading offline walmart is also leading online sometimes same customer prefers online sometimes so customer has choice so point is lot of disruption has happened in other industries cheaper options were given to customers and management education is overdue for this this is what i feel and particularly post covid people believe that oh no education cannot be done effectively online but now that we professors like me we are compelled to teach and we are understanding the power of online and we are understanding the inefficiencies i am sure the educational entrepreneurs emerging into educational entrepreneurs will reengineer the business model of management education that is what i feel and that and that uh, the date which is there and student who is disproportionately charged that will come in so i see that plus this is one thing disruption will happen another thing that i can see is a uh, lot of flexibility coming through right like for india uh, the trend is once you done undergraduate immediately back to back you do your mba like right? which is not there in europe and us right so you go to industry work for few years but in india it is so rigid so there is no flexibility like there there are even if i do, so even if my student wants to do evening mba he, there is no option anybody wanting to executive mba hardly any option so this flexibility will come now so i see in 2021 this flexibility in terms of uh, in terms of curriculum in terms of timings 
uh, in terms of the duration and not only that but the flexibility will also why should i uh, learn only from the faculty which university has assigned to my class why not i choose my faculty so that flexibility will also emerge and uh, sites like udemy uh, udemy and coursera and uh, linkedin learning they have already started it and world class professors have already prepared courses and at, they are available at a very competitive prices but unfortunately unfortunately today only one small course is available right there is not a bunch or bouquet of the course and they are not giving any formal degrees uh, which are recognized by the industry so there are certain developments which i am expecting will happen but uh, most important thing is industry has to play a lot of uh, role in this uh, there are very few countries like germany where the, uh, the this industry is really responsible uh, for developing their education system particularly the apprenticeship uh, kind of based education system in germany i really appreciate or even in america in mba curriculum uh, two third of the students are placed a uh, uh, pre placement offer as extension of their internship so companies are playing lot of role there but uh, unfortunately many countries particularly developing countries like india china and other countries have uh, industries companies have to understand these models and benchmark and contribute just blaming blaming uh, academicians and academic uh, institutions and universities saying that students are not up to the mark or they do don't have practical orientation they are not employable these are what things people write but that is not enough so my my only point is if there is dark light the candle don't just complain about dark there is a dark light the candle so industry has to light the candle lot of things policy changes like government of india recently opened up foreign universities to set up campus for reasons best known to them uh, good universities were not allowed to set up campus in india but fortunately government has realized that so soon we will see best of the best european universities american universities coming to india and then they will be uh, doing the reengineering of academic systems so i am hopeful that these boundaries will come down globalization will also be there in education and student will and like consumers are beneficiaries of globalization so students and professors too researchers professors particularly in developing world will be the beneficiary this culture of research consultancy will get into see these days i am uh, adjunct faculty adjunct professor why because as a full time professor i cannot spare time for doing my consultancy correct so so, so like for many b schools teachers are teaching shops mm -hmm. they are load and then it is called work load i say that if teaching is a load then better not be a professor so you should not feel that teaching load they they commonly speak what is your teaching load means how many lectures you are taking in a week so they will say teaching load so i say teaching cannot be load those who feel it is load are not competent professors so this western culture i really appreciate about uh, developing scholarship and um uh, doing lot of research writing indian professors many times ask question we are professors we are teacher why should we write and why should we do research we are not researchers so it is high time and i see that in 2021 onwards this paradigm shift will come and teacher professors teachers will also realize few things they will also benchmark and learn good things which western world like in europe has happened in america it is so these are some of the changes i have seen thank you ajit um it was a great pleasure talking to you and i think we can uh, use your metaphor of lighting the candle then for 2021 yeah thank and, you and uh, i do hope to visit mumbai then also in 2021 so sure, guys wake up yes. and i am going to take you from airport okay lovely uh, and i am going to drop you on airport 
right? Wonderful. Yeah, and you are going to have delicious Indian dishes. My wife is a good cook. Oh, wonderful! And this is and this is the evidence. <laughs> wonderful. Uh, thank you. Thanks, thanks very much nice again, talk. and uh, stay well. Yeah, thank you, and thanks for this uh, valuable opportunity, and thanks for taking my thoughts to the world. Thanks. Again.